YouTube, it's Zoe, and Happy New Year! It is now 2018, which does not sound natural coming out of my mouth at all. 2018, we're all getting so old. Anyway, I read eight books in December, some of which I did not like, but some turned out to be my favorites of the entire year. So, kind of a mixed bag, let's get into it. The first five books I actually read during my last 24 hour readathon, which I will link down below if you haven't watched it yet. It is 30 minutes long, so I do not blame you if you haven't watched it or don't even want to watch it. The first book I read was Let It Snow, a collection of three holiday romances by John Green, Maureen Johnson, and Lauren Miracle. They are all connected, kind of like Love Actually. I gave Maureen Johnson's story Jubilee Express 3.5 out of 5 stars. A Cheertastic Christmas Miracle by John Green, 2 out of 5 stars, and The Patron Saint of Pigs by Lauren Miracle, 3 out of 5 stars. So overall, I'd say this is a 3 out of 5 star book. It was okay. It was a fluffy and easy holiday read. It made me laugh out loud at times, but there were problematic elements in all of the stories, and every single author, for some reason, bashed cheerleaders. As you can tell, my least favorite story was John Green's, which I was not expecting since he is the reason why I even purchased this book. He is my favorite author of the three. His story was quite bland, and since it follows two teenage boys racing to meet a bunch of hot cheerleaders, it was kind of weird and awkward to read. But it was published in 2008, so his writing has definitely improved since then. But Overall, if you still want to read a fluffy, easy holiday book, here you go. This is an option. The next book I read was Death by Eggnog by Alex Erickson, which I gave 2.5 out of 5 stars. This wrap up is starting poorly. I promise I liked some of the later books, but these first two. Uh. Now, I didn't go into this book expecting a literary masterpiece. I actually went out of my way to find the cheesiest holiday murder mystery I could find and this one. I mean, just look, look at the cover. And the tagline is, it's beginning to look a lot like murder. This follows a woman named Chrissy Hancock whose Christmas plans are canceled, so she ends up filling in as an elf for the town's Christmas play. One day, the guy who plays Santa is found dead, and Chrissy takes it upon herself to figure out who did it, even though there are already detectives on the case. And she is just a bookstore owner, which is cool, I'll, I'll grant you that. But how does it qualify her to catch a killer? I don't know. Suspension of disbelief, whatever. That's not the problem I had with the book. The main problem I had was that this is so repetitive. Chrissy somehow survives on a diet of cookies, even though she is a grown woman, and her process of making a cup of coffee and then putting a cookie into her coffee is described at least 10 times. Why? I read this in just a few hours because it was during the readathon, but it felt like this dragged on so long, and it's under 300 pages. Anyway, it wasn't as cheesy and cute as I wanted it to be. Darn. But if you know any cute, cozy mysteries, please let me know down below because I, I need... I need a better one than this. I then read Moonstone, The Boy Who Never Was by Sean. I think that's how you pronounce his name. It is S-J-O-N and he is Icelandic. And I gave it three out of five stars. I asked on Twitter for recommendations of books to read during the readathon and Joss from Scribbles Reads recommended this one. This is an Icelandic book that takes place in Reykjavik in 1918 when the Spanish influenza is ravaging the country. The main character is gay and works as a call boy? Is that, is that a term? He performs sexual acts for money. He is also an avid moviegoer. This is a translated work, so I'm not sure if the translation is the reason why I didn't like this book more. I thought the concept of the book was quite interesting. I love historical fiction, and I was so excited to learn more about Iceland because I really don't know 
too much about the country, but I didn't connect to any of the characters, and I had a really hard time remaining grounded in the story since he rarely ever set the scene well. This also starts off as a more realistic historical fiction book, and then it veers off becoming more surreal and more fantastical, so again, I had a hard time remaining grounded in this story. I had no idea what was going on. I'm sure if I reread this, I will appreciate the work more and understand more of what is going on, but I don't think I want to reread this book, at least not right now. It was just okay. Again, three out of five stars. Next, I read The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak, which I gave five out of five stars. Finally, a book that I actually really enjoyed in this video. You probably already know what this is about, but if you don't, this follows a girl named Liesel who lives in Germany during World War I, and she steals books. Spoiler, she's the book thief. Oh. And it follows the horrors that are taking place in Europe during this time. This book hit me so hard. It was exactly what I was craving at that time. The prose is so descriptive and so beautiful. I connected with every single character. It was the opposite of the writing in Moonstone. I connected with every character, I was grounded in the story, I could see everything that was going on, and even though it is like 550 pages, I just wanted it to be longer. I cried during the last like 100 pages. No, I full on sobbed during the last 100 pages. It was magical, and I now want to reread this book but I mustn't. The last one I read during my last 24 hour readathon was Eloise at Christmas Time by Kay Thompson, which I read half because this used to be one of my favorite books when I was a kid, and half because it is a children's book, so I could read it extremely quickly and still say I read five books during the readathon. Sneaky, sneaky. That's me. I gave this four out of five stars. It is so cute. It follows a little girl who is raised by her nanny at the Plaza Hotel in New York City. Honestly, the dream. I am still jealous <laughs> of a little girl. A little fictional girl. I love the art style. It is so nostalgic. I think that's probably the reason I gave it four out of five stars. If I hadn't read this before when I was a child, I probably would have rated it lower, but memories. Then the first book I didn't read during the readathon was Austin Land by Shannon Hale, which I gave three out of five stars. This is about a woman named Jane who is obsessed with the BBC adaptation of Pride and Prejudice, and because of that, she has not found love because she keeps on comparing every single man to Mr. Darcy obviously. A wealthy relative dies and leaves Jane a trip to a place called Austin Land in her will. And Austin Land is a resort in England set up like a Regency era manor, and you go there and pretend you are in a Jane Austen novel. You get like a Regency era man, and then you dress in all the dresses, and you have tea, and you do a bunch of Jane Austen things, and it sounds amazing and I would go. This was adapted into a movie by Stephanie Meyer's Film Company, and I love the movie so much. It is so wacky and fun and colorful, and the chemistry between the two leads is crazy. They are my movie OTP forever, the chemistry, ha ha ha. But Fun fact, I like the movie more than I liked the book. One of the rare times when the book is actually worse than the movie. I didn't think it existed, but here you go. In the movie, Jane is a raging Austin fangirl. She has covered every inch of her apartment with Austin merch, and she memorized the first three chapters of Pride and Prejudice. She is just a pinch pitiful, so you root for her. But in the book, Jane has her stuff together. She is a secret Austin fan. Like, it's a shameful thing to like Jane Austen. She hides the movie in a planter. And, by the way, she doesn't like the Jane Austen books. She just likes the movie version. So I don't get why she's, like, ashamed of liking a movie. So I disliked her character, obviously, and the relationship between her and the person at Austin Land just wasn't as cute. In general, the book wasn't as cute, and I was disappointed. I should have read the book before I watched the movie, because I probably would have liked it more then, but 
If you want to watch a really cute movie, I would recommend Austin Land. Next, I read Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend, which I gave 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is the first book in a new middle grade fantasy series, and it follows an 11 year old named Morgan Crow, who is a cursed child because she was born on the unluckiest day. And because of this, Everything that goes wrong in her town is blamed on her. Even things that aren't her fault, like weather, it's her fault now because she's a cursed child. Also, cursed children are supposed to die on their 11th birthday because their lives aren't hard enough, I guess, but before her birthday, she is whisked off to a magical city called Nevermore and entered into a competition to become a member of a magical organization. I really enjoyed the story. It was completely whimsical. There was a huge talking cat that was a housekeeper. People were using umbrellas to glide like Mary Poppins. I could really envision everything that was going on and I felt like I was part of the story. And again, that is very important to me. I need to feel like I am there. This is exactly the type of book I would have loved when I was a child. I love it now when I'm in my 20s, so it's good for all ages. I am definitely going to be picking up the next book in the series. I am totally invested. And finally, the last book I read in December. The last book I read in 2017 was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, which I gave 5 out of 5 stars, definitely ending the year on a high note. Again, you most likely know what this is about, but if you don't, this follows a black teenager named Star who sees one of her childhood best friends shot and killed by a police officer, and it follows the repercussions of this travesty. Angie Thomas's writing style is exactly what I love in a contemporary. It is so natural and personal, you really feel like you get to know Star and you understand the conflict that is inside of her. Also, I am so happy she created such a loving family for Star. It's rare in young adult literature to have parents get any page time, let alone to give two parents such pivotal roles in the story. I loved both of them so much, especially her dad. Of course, I also appreciated how it challenged police brutality and the way the media twists the narrative. So many parts of this made me examine my past actions, and that is why it is important to read about people with different backgrounds from you. It was fantastic, and I cannot wait to read her next book, which comes out in just a few months. So that's all. Those are the eight books I read in December. I didn't read all of the books that I was planning on reading before the end of 2017, but I am still proud with my reading month, especially because I read some new favorites. Please let me know down below what your favorite book you read in December was. I love hearing from you all because it really does influence what I read next. Thank you all so much for watching and I will talk to you all soon in my next video. Bye!